Hi everyone, my name is Soren Shah. I'm a product manager in Snowflake and today I'm going to show you a demo for Polaris Catalog. So if you haven't seen the announcements, Polaris is an open catalog for Apache Iceberg tables. Uh, using Polaris, you can use multiple engines to read and write Iceberg tables into Polaris. So uh, Polaris doesn't give any preferential treatment to any vendors or any engines. Uh, it's a completely independent service from Snowflake. And that's why it's highly interoperable with all of the engines. You can use any engine to read and write iceberg tables into Polaris. Okay, so let's now jump into the demo. So here I am on the home screen of the Polaris UI. There are a few concepts here, so let me explain them one by one. So the first one is manage catalogs. So in Polaris, you can use or you can create, organize and manage privileges on catalogs, namespaces as well as the iceberg tables. You can create as many catalogs as you want and you can create different privileges for all of these catalogs. The next section is connections. So what are connections? So connections are really for service principles that you can create in Polaris. You can assign appropriate roles to the service principles and configure these service principles into various different engines so engines can connect to Polaris and they can run queries. The third one is users. Polaris has built-in role-based access control, and that's how you can assign privileges to users and roles to users and whatnot. So in this section, you can create users, and so that each individual user, they can log in into Polaris, they can create their own service principles, they can create their own roles, and they can associate those principles with the engines. So what do I need to do to start first? I'm going to go and say create a connection. So uh, to create a connection, I just click on this. Uh, I'm going to choose Apache Spark as my connection. And then I'm going to say Polaris demo connection, say for Spark. I can choose to create a new principal role so that I can assign this principal role to the service connection. Or I can choose one of the pre-configured roles and catalog managers is the one which I'm going to choose. So what this really means is I'm going to create a new connection or a new service principle and I'm going to assign uh, it a role so that that service principle can go and manage the catalogs. I click on create and generate credentials and it generates a client ID and a client secret. Now it's very important to copy these client ID and secrets and store it in your vault or wherever you want to uh, because these cannot be retrieved later on. Uh, you can, of course, go and re, uh, rotate the credentials whenever you need it. So I'm not going to copy this right now because for the purposes of this demo, I've already created two connections. One is a Snow Demo connection and one is a Spark Demo connection. So the Snow Demo connection is for the service Snowflake and I'm going to configure this client ID and secret in Snowflake and run queries. And Spark Demo is for Apache Spark. So at this point, it might be good to explain what the demo is going to be about. So in this demo, I'm going to do two scenarios. The first scenario is where I'm creating tables using Apache Spark, and these tables are stored into Polaris. And then I'm going to go to Snowflake and then query those tables from Snowflake. And the second scenario is going to be the reverse scenario where I'm going to create the tables, iceberg tables from Snowflake. I'm going to create them or push them into Polaris. And then I'm going to query those tables from Apache Spark. So for this, I need two catalogs. And I've already created those two catalogs, but let me show you how to create a catalog. So when I want to create a catalog, let's say I can say Polaris demo catalog. I can give any comment if I want to give comments. I can choose any storage provider. So this storage provider is where the tables for the iceberg files will be stored. And then I have to give a bucket URL. So let's copy this bucket URL over here. And I have to provide a AWS role which has access to the buckets or the files on the buckets. So I have an AWS role over here. I can copy and paste this AWS role here and I can say create catalog. So now the Polaris demo catalog is created. There is one more step that I need to do is take the IAM user that is associated with this catalog go to my AWS account and create a trust relationship between the IAM user and the AWS role ARN that is associated with the buckets. So after that point, the catalog can have 
read and write privileges onto the storage. But I'm not going to do that as part of this demo. I have already created two catalogs over here, the Snow demo and then the Spark demo. So let me explain these two catalogs a little bit. There is one is an external catalog and one is an internal catalog. So the Spark demo catalog is an internal catalog. It is completely managed by Polaris. So what it means is Spark can read and write tables into Polaris using this catalog. Whereas the Snow demo catalog, the source of truth for that is actually lives in Snowflake. So in Snowflake, you can create iceberg tables. They live in the Snow demo catalog, but then they are synced to Polaris. And at that point, these tables become read only for other engines on Polaris. So Polaris has these concepts of two catalogs. Okay, so now that I've explained this, let's just jump right in into the actual demo. So let's go to Spark. And in Spark, I'm going to set the catalog to be the Spark demo catalog. And I'm going to create a few namespaces that I want to create. So, control C. Okay. So, a namespace called Spark DB has been created. I'm going to use that namespace and then I'm going to create one table. So, here is a table that I'm creating in Spark. It is a sample customers table and I'm going to insert a few records into the table. So now a table has been created. If we actually go to the Polaris UI, we will see the table that has been created over there. But let me just insert a few records also and then go to the Polaris UI. So it's inserting, Spark query is running. And after this, so that the rows have been inserted, what an iceberg table would have been created on the storage account, which we had configured. But let's go to Polaris UI. And in the Spark demo catalog, if we expand this, now you will see that there is a Spark DB namespace and the customer table that was created by Spark. So what I really want to do right now is I want to go to Snowflake and then query this table because I created this from Spark. So let me go to Snowflake. Here I have the Snowflake UI running. And to do that, I'm going to run or create a catalog integration. So catalog integration is for the Spark demo catalog. You will see that Polaris server is running on my local machine. I've already configured this with the client ID and the client secret that I had created for the Snowflake client ID and the Snowflake client secret. If I do a describe on this Polaris catalog, you will see that the catalog source is Polaris, which is great. So now let's go ahead and create a database and a schema. And what I want to do is the customer table that we created in Spark. I want to query that customer table from Snowflake. So in Snowflake, I am creating an unmanaged iceberg table uh, using the catalog integration that we had just recently created. Now you may wonder like why do we need to create an iceberg table in Snowflake? And that's because the iceberg table when we create it in Snowflake, it becomes part of the Snowflake system. It doesn't really mean that we are actually copying over all of the data. The data still says in the customer bucket that we had configured and the catalog also still stays in the Polaris catalog. So the source of truth for the data and the catalog still exists outside. But just creating a table object, which is a link from here to Polaris is necessary because in Snowflake now this becomes part of the Snowflake system. So if I want to use, say, horizon access policies, governance policies, or masking policies, I can use that over here. Likewise, I can use this table in many other Snowflake features also. So let me run a select query. If I run a select query, you will see that all these three records which we had created from Spark are shown over here as part of the query results. So that concludes our first scenario where we created a table from Spark and we are querying that table from Snowflake. So now let me move on to the second scenario where we want to create a table in Snowflake or create an iceberg table, push it into Polaris so that Spark can actually query that. So for that, I'm using this catalog integration, but this catalog integration is for the Snow demo catalog, which we had created. You remember this was an external catalog that we had created. I'm using the same client ID and secret for the Snowflake principles. I'm going to use the submit DB and the submit schema, which we had already created. 
and I'm going to set up catalog sync to this no demo catalog in Polaris. So what this catalog sync does is anytime a new table has been created on Snowflake on a new iceberg table or it's an existing table is updated or dropped, we will send a notification to Polaris. Polaris will grab that notification and make a necessary update on its side. So let's create a table. So here I created a Snowflake managed iceberg table. I'm going to insert a few records into that table. And when I insert these records, it's going to send the notification to Polaris. But before that, let's just make sure that I can run queries onto the Snowflake managed table. I can run and I can see all of the data available. I can even do a join between the Snowflake managed table and the Spark table that we had created. And this really gives the power of interoperability because one table is created from Snowflake, one is created from Spark, but I'm still able to do a join between all of these. So now let's go to Polaris UI and in the Polaris UI, you will see the Snow Demo catalog. It was empty before, but now it has been populated with the Summit DB namespace that came from Snowflake, the, the Summit schema, and you can see this table here as well. Let's do the last step, which is go to Spark and then run a query on this table. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to switch my catalog to the Snow Demo catalog in Spark. And if I do say show namespaces, I should be able to see the Summit DB namespace, which is great. And if I do show tables, I should be able to see those tables also. But before that, I need to do use namespaces. Okay. So let's copy over show tables and you see over here, I'm able to see the orders table which was created in Snowflake. So last step, let's run a select query on the orders table and I should be able to see all of the records which were inserted in Snowflake and queryable all of the 10 records which are inserted in Snowflake and they are now queried from Spark. So before we conclude, there is one last thing that I want to show is the power of notifications so I go to Snowflake over here and I'm going to drop this table which was created in Snowflake. So if you remember this table was created in Snowflake, the source of truth stays in the table and the notifications are sent to the Polaris UI. So after I drop the table, notifications will be sent to the Polaris UI and the tables will be dropped in Polaris. So if I try to do show tables in Spark, this table will be gone. So what this really means is the Polaris is the centralized catalog, which is actually highly interoperable between the two engines, Spark and Snowflake. So that concludes our demo. Uh, to summarize, we saw two scenarios in this demo. In the first scenario, I used Spark to create iceberg tables into Polaris. And then I queried those iceberg tables from Snowflake. And in the second scenario, I created iceberg tables using Snowflake. I synced them to Polaris and then I queried them from Spark. Now in this demo, I was using Spark as well as uh, Snowflake, but I could use any engines that I really wanted to, as long as these engines are supporting uh, REST catalog APIs for Iceberg, they should be able to, you should be able to use them with Polaris. So thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this was useful. I'm very excited about the Polaris launch and even more excited for you to use the functionality when we launch it.